Okay, so we have a charge somewhere in space with a charge of Q, and it's at a point ABC, essentially an unknown point in all directions. We don't have a clue where the X, Y, or Z is. And it's placed somewhere, but we know when we put a test charge at the origin, we get a certain force. We get a force of this value. And then when we move it to this point, we get a force of a certain value. And what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to find out the difference between the two points and how it changes based on those two points, and then we'll be able to uh, pinpoint where this charge could be, could be. So here we go. Let's start. So Q is at P, which is A, B, and C. Okay, that's, that's one thing we know. What else do we know? We know that um, at the origin, we'll call this point at point one, point one, which is zero zero zero. Um, F is equal to zero point five in the x, zero point five square root of three in the y, and zero in the z. And then lastly, at 2, which is at 1, 0, 0, this point right here, the force is in the direction of 0 0.6. It is at 0 0.6. This is negative 0 0.8. And again, the z is at 0 because it's not shown. In that notation, we know it's 0. So what do we need to do? First, we could find a vector that goes from p to 1, and then a vector from p to 2, and we'll use those two vectors to find unit vectors, and that will help us uh, develop the force equation. And then we can use those to uh, figure out where the hell this point is. So let's start with 1. So the p1 vector is going from point A, B, C to point 0, 0, 0, from point P to, to 1. So it'll look like this. It'll be 0 minus A, 0 minus B, because you take this one minus that one, because it's going from A, B, C to 0, 0, 0. 0 minus C, which will equal negative A, negative B, and negative C. Okay, let me find the magnitude of this. It's just, just the squared elements, these components, and they're negative, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be squaring them, so I'll just leave it like that. Now we find the uh, same vector for P2, we'll call this P2 vector. So it would be 1 minus A. 0 minus b, I'll just call it negative b, and 0 minus c, which is negative c. And then we'll find the magnitude of p2, write that over here, which again is the squared elements of these guys, 1 minus a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, so now we have the, uh, we can develop a unit vector for each of these two. So let's start with uh, the p1 again. So F1, F1 is equal to Q, 4 pi epsilon naught, over, this is our R value right here, and since we want an R squared value by our equation, you know the equation, the uh, F equals Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. And remember, this, this second Q is a test charge, so it's just going to be 1, so we don't have to worry about it. But anyway, back to this, r squared, since that's a square root, we just can put in a squared plus b squared plus c squared, and that'll be sufficient. And then we multiply it by the unit vector, which is negative a, negative b, negative c, and that'll be over this again, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Okay, so there's a few things that pop out instantly. We can combine these two terms right here. We can combine these two guys right here, right? And we could uh, 
Let me make this a little more clear. This is the parentheses. And this is just the multiplication. We're, we're multiplying this whole thing. So we can combine these two, but also we already know F1. Remember, F1 was given to us. F1 is this guy up here. Oh man, let me. Yeah, it was. Um, F1 was given to us. Let me zoom out a little bit too, actually. While I'm doing it. it was given to us right here 0 0.5, 0 0.5 square root of 3. So we could set that equal right now. So this will be. 0 0.5, um, 0 0.5 root 3, 0, and that'll be equal to this whole shebang right here, q over 4 pi epsilon naught, and remember this, these two are going to combine to give us the three halves. And then we have it multiplied by the vector negative a, negative b, negative c. Okay. So that's basically all we can do. This is our our first equation, and we can't really get it any more simple than that at this point. Okay, so we'll do the same thing for this guy. We already know the force. The force is this guy right up here force of F2, this will be F2, and it's that right there. So let's write that out. Give us some more space. 0.6, negative 0 0.8, 0. Okay, do this over 4 pi epsilon naught. And since I already know it's going to turn into a 3 halves, because it's going to follow the same form as this guy right up here, I'm just going to do that right off the bat. So it'll be 1 minus a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Shoot, that c squared didn't turn out very well. c squared, there you go. This will be the three halves. And then we have the same thing, a vector like this. Negative b, negative c. Okay, so now you have two equations. that we can use to solve for this thing. But wait, we have three variables. Oh, okay, I already see what's going to happen to this C. <laughs> Rhymed a little bit, it's kind of a pun. I can see what happens to C. Anyway, the C is going to equal zero. How do I know that? Well, if you look at it, this is really telling us this is the Z component of our vector and how it's going to behave. And we know that our, our z component is going to equal zero. And yeah, it is over a bunch of stuff, but zero over anything is what? Zero. And the only way we're going to be able to get zero out of this whole equation is if this thing is freaking infinity, which we're not really concerned about because we're trying to find finite answers. Because, you know, if you take a limit of like a, a one over, you know, like a one over infinity would equal zero. But that's not really possible with this uh, situation because we're actually looking for finite numbers. So we know that the only way that we're going to get a zero out of our uh, out of our numbers out of our variables here is if c is equal to zero. So c must equal zero. So that leaves us with a and b. So what you could do is now you could plug in zero for these guys. So now it looks something like this you would no longer have that C there because it'd just be zeros. And then you could solve for A and B because you have two variables and you have two equations and you can do some quick math to figure out what, uh, what A and B are equal to. It's just a simple system of equations algebra problem, you know, because uh, Q would, Q would uh, cancel out and everything, so. turns out that you have two sets that are possible for point P. P could either equal 0 0.453, negative 7, 5, 3, and 0. And P can equal 
negative 3.34. And this, the reason it equals a set is because these are both squared values. So you're going to get two results for both A and B. But most likely on a test, you wouldn't, or, or on any problem, you wouldn't need to go this far. You wouldn't have to do all the, because it just becomes a really annoying algebra problem after this point where I got to the system of equations. That's why I'm not even solving it. I just wanted to do the physics part of it. Um, but yeah, that's what your answer would be. It's really not too bad of a problem. Once you see how you do it, you just basically plug in the A's and B's and C's and all that shit. And, you know, it really ain't too bad. But, all right. I hope you guys had a fun or, or whatever. Learn something. I don't know. Peace.